Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. The big news for today is the unfortunate news of the earthquake striking the countries of Indonesia and the Solomon Islands. While in Indonesia many people have lost their lives in Solomon Islands, there is no such news so far. In this video we will be discussing what exactly is the reason behind the frequent earthquakes that strike these nations. Is it their geographical location or is it something else? Before we do that, reminding you that we are now on Telegram as well. If you are still not a part of our Telegram channel, please do use the link given in the description of the video to join our channel and get all the latest current affairs updates about the UPSC examination. Now the news around the world is that Indonesia, specifically Java, has been hit by a huge earthquake that has killed over 160 people so far and it has injured several several times more. Also, this morning we also got news that the Solomon Islands, which is the Pacific Island nation, has also been hit by a 7.0 magnitude earthquake, which has given rise to fears that tsunami may not be far away because of this earthquake. Now, let's first talk about Indonesia. Unfortunately, more than 160 people have reportedly been killed in Indonesia's West Java province. The epicenter, as per the experts of this earthquake, is near the town of Shianjo, which is in the mountainous region of western Java. On the other hand, in the Solomon Islands, as I said, the earthquake just struck today morning. It was a 7.0 magnitude earthquake, which was greater than the one that struck Indonesia. But thankfully, there is no loss of life that has been reported from the Solomon Islands. Now, although there is no loss of life, but the government of Solomon Islands has already issued a notification asking the people to go to higher areas because whenever there is such an earthquake in an island nation, there is imminent danger of tsunami striking very, very soon. That is why because of the immediate tsunami warnings, the Prime Minister has advised the locals to move to a higher ground. The Solomon Islands was shaking for 20 seconds continuously because of these tremors. Now, what is it that these two nations have in common? That is the Pacific Ring of Fire. Now, I'm sure you have read this in Indian Geography. This area called the Pacific Ring is considered as the area which has the most active volcanoes and the most frequent earthquakes in the entire world. So much so that over three-fourths of the world's volcanoes, about 450 of them are present just in this particular area. Because of which, about 90% of the world's earthquakes actually occur in this area and the nations lying in this area are highly susceptible to it. The Ring of Fire is approximately 40,000 km and the boundaries actually include the Pacific, Yuan de Fuca, Caucasus, Indian, Australian and the other plates. And I'll just show you the names of the plates in just a bit. There are multiple nations that come on this stretch. This includes Bolivia, Chile, Ecuador, Guatemala, Mexico, Philippines, Indonesia, New Zealand, Antarctica and also some of the very very small Pacific Island nations which exist nearby this area only. Now what exactly is the reason behind this volcanic activity? Now it has all got to do with the movement of the tectonic plates. Now as you know the tectonic plates that comprise the entire world move towards each other or away from each other which actually create different types of unstable zones. When the tectonic plates move towards each other, they create something called the subduction zone. Now, subduction zone is a zone where one plate, for example, if this is plate number one, this is plate number two, if both these are moving towards each other, one plate might go under and the other plate might go over. This becomes a subduction zone. Now, it is a very, very slow process, so much so that the movement of the entire plate is not more than one or two inches in the entire year. However, when this subduction happens, it actually rises the temperature drastically, leading to the rocks being melted and they become magma, moving towards the Earth's surface and thus leading to volcanic activities. Now, if you remember a few months back, this is exactly what happened in Tonga. Tonga also is a small island nation in the Pacific Ocean. It was in Tonga that the Pacific plate was pushed down below the Indo-Australian plate and the Tonga plate, which is why the molten rocks actually rose and it led to volcanoes. These Pacific Island nations, the small nations nearby this particular Pacific Rim of Fire are highly, highly susceptible to these kind of volcanic eruptions. These are the different types of plates that you might have heard of. The Australian plate, the Indian plate, Somalian, Arabian, Eurasian, so on and so forth.
Now, there have also been certain recent research that has been conducted specifically in this area. The scientists have said that the Pacific plate, mainly because of which there is a lot of tectonic activity, is actually cooling off, means the temperatures are actually coming down. Scientists have discovered that the youngest parts of the Pacific plates are cooling off, meaning that the plate which was recently formed is now cooling down. Also, they are contracting at a faster pace as compared to the older parts of the plate. Also, the younger parts are the most active parts of this Pacific Rim of Fire. The younger parts of the plate are found in northern and in the western parts. Also, if you can see this diagram, look at what is happening here. This is plate 1 and this is plate 2. When these actually move towards each other, one plate is going below the other plate. This becomes a subduction zone. As you can see here, this is where the temperature increases. This now melts the rocks, this becomes magma and this has to come up. Similar is the case here also. When these plates move towards each other, you will see that one plate would have to go underneath, the other plate would go up and the rocks will melt here because of the increase in temperature. This gives rise to magma and the magma will then go off and become the volcanic activity. Also, as you know, this is one of the few natural disasters which cannot be estimated earlier. So you cannot have an early warning system unlike you have in tsunami and in many other kinds of other disasters. That is what makes earthquakes the most difficult ones to actually counter, especially in these small island nations. This is it for today's big news. I hope you learned a lot of new things today. Thank you so much for watching.